Right, how are you doing? He's hoping that all is well with you from wherever you're watching us. Many, many thanks for joining us right here on Debate 411. My name as always is Eugene Anangwe. Of course, soon we'll be live and of course we'll be reading some of your tweets right here in the program and other avenues where you'll be communicating with us and that is on Facebook and we'll also have an SMS platform. Therefore, it is important to start learning to use the hashtag Debate411. That's what we'll be looking at as we check out some of your comments right here. Now, today on the program, we're putting on the table an issue we've all been speaking about, an issue we have passion about. And that's the issue of customer care service. And we are asking ourselves on the program, whose responsibility is it to ensure exemplary service is offered? Is it the customers or is it the service providers? And that is why we have right in the program, Valentine Nashipai, who is from Cube Communication. Welcome to Debate 411. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Nice to have you always on a day-to-day -day basis, handle clients, and I'm sure you'll be sharing your experience here with us on what role they can play to ensure we have good service delivery, right? Yes. Also with us is none other than Sandra Idosu. We know her from the Service Magazine. You recently handed over the publishing responsibility, and of course, thank you for being with us on Debate 411. It's a pleasure. We have Bona Gerald Nchisi, who just took over as the publisher of the Service Mag. Are we still having a party, or <laughs> the party is over? It is now on we the are way. You have been informed. <laughs> okay. So, so, thank you for joining us on Debate 411. My pleasure. Also, we have Eve, who is from Rwanda Development Board, the Customer Service Unit. Welcome to Debate 411. Thank you. Thank now, you. the question is now on the table. Whose responsibility is it to ensure that we have good service delivery in terms of customer care? And most people have always been asking whether the principle of the customer is always right is really true. And probably I'll start with that. Val, do you believe that the customer is always right? Yes, I do. I think the customer is always right, uh, though there are ways that the customer can help um, you know, propel us to get to a better level of service. But I completely believe the onus is firmly on the service provider. The service provider. Yes. Okay, and that, that sets already the tone. Let's move to, 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 to Sandra. You believe the customer is always right? Definitely. I think the customer is always right for two reasons. For the fact that it is because of the customer that the service provider is there. Mm -hmm. So if there was no customer, there wouldn't be any service provider. So mm -hmm. that makes him the king. That's, that makes him uh, the reason why we're into business. Mm -hmm. And then the second reason is that the customer is always right because it helps the institutions or the service provider to offer good services. Mm. Is, is it a question of the chicken and egg? The customer comes first or the service provider comes first? No, Eugene, uh, that maxim that the customer is always right, I wish they could remove the word always. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because there are many instances when the customer can be wrong. Mm -hmm. So that statement to me, it's wrong. It's not correct. It's not correct. Mm -hmm. uh, See, customer service is about one's attitude. And a positive attitude is not necessarily the preserve of the service provider. They too also eh, have a role to play. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, uh, customers can be wrong because of this thing attitude the attitude yes let me hear from eve do you stand in the same boat as saying always or would you want to scrap off the word always i think uh, I'll, I'll join the team over here the, mm. the can, can we move space <laughs> for you over here uh, yes uh, i don't mind <laughs> staying here alone <laughs> yes. i think uh, the customer is always uh, king mm -hmm. but again there is a point uh, mr pc just brought mm -hmm. that uh, um it was uh, it all about the attitude so predominantly it is uh, the service provider's uh, responsibility for, for good service. But mm -hmm. as well, there is, I think there is a shared responsibility, again, <coughs> from the side of the clients. Mm -hmm. uh, a simple example would be about the attitude that uh, Mr. Mpisi just raised is when you thank, for example, a service provider. I think it has an impact. It gives an impact. So as well, I think uh, it's both ways. Uh, what you give, what you receive. For example, um, if I was walking into a, um, a shop and um, the, the attitude I'm, I'm giving, the, 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 the voice I'm, I'm talking to the service provider, mm -hmm. it can affect how I'm going to be received. Mm -hmm. So predominantly for me, I think it is the, uh, the responsibility of the service provider, 
but as well there is also a responsibility of the client of the client yeah. val you always have these clients who come to your office they want you to do something and they come with an attitude that uh, bona gerald mentioned here that probably makes one of your staff members just irritated they're human and and, and they, they feel like he came with a bad attitude towards me and he caused me to react in the way i reacted or, I, or give the service in the way i offered it as a, as, as, as a leader in your institution, what would you do to that member of staff of yours who acts like that as a result of the attitude of the customer? Uh, I think the first person I'd blame is myself mm -hmm. before I actually blame my member of staff. Mm -hmm. Normally, um, and that's, let me not really just talk about myself, even my clients. Uh, there's now a focus on how do we ensure that our frontline staff, those that are meeting, with uh, the customer uh, armed with the information that they need and the skill set that they require to be able to deal with such a situation. And for me, um, I think there's a lot of focus on, oh, let's get a CRM system so that we can manage our customers. Mm -hmm. Let's make sure that if they want a checkbook, they get it within five days if I'm a bank. If I'm an insurance company, let me make sure that they can get a quote in, 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 in a few minutes through my you know, nice, sleek, uh, technical software mm -hmm. installation that cost mm -hmm. me millions and billions, mm. uh, then we forget about that moment that you just gave an example about, what we call the moment of truth. Mm. And there was an interesting um, McKinsey report done back in 2006 that a friend highlighted to me, and it really does explore what a moment of truth means versus all the humdrum uh, focus that we have on other things that don't really matter. Mm. And the moment of truth is that time when that person walked in and he was mad. Mm. How did you take that? Mm. How did you deal with that? And it goes back to also what you're saying is that about the customer is not always right. Maybe how I'd rephrase that is when that customer is walking in, he is correct. He, as far as he's concerned, whatever he's feeling is that you, you need to deal with it. So for me, he is right in sense of he has a certain feeling and I need to figure out how to fix it. This is my moment to shine mm -hmm. and have a lasting impression and turn this customer from someone who came in all guns blazing mm -hmm. to my ambassador. So I think the focus is, do we arm our frontline staff with enough uh, information and how do we use emotional intelligence to help them make use of these moments of truth, those bad moments. Mm. I really, for me, the checkbook how it came in, whether it was in a nice envelope or not, doesn't, doesn't really matter. Mm. But if the checkbook was missing entirely, how you handle that mm -hmm. is what really has a lasting but Gerald, are, yeah. we, are we are we missing the point here are we are we are we blaming uh, too much the service providers and not wanting to face that moment of truth that reality yeah. that that customer had also a mistake and we don't want to look at that in fact from a, a management point of view mm -hmm. it, it is very sad sometimes because we want to emphasize this point that the customer is always right mm -hmm. sometimes we go a lot out of our way mm -hmm. to please this bad customer, mm -hmm. though the, the customer comes in with an attitude. Mm -hmm. So we spend a lot of energy trying to prove that the customer is indeed always right, right. Mm -hmm. sometimes at the expense of the nice guys, mm -hmm. you know, the good customers. That's one thing. Secondly, there are times when these nasty, if you allow me to use that <laughs> word, mm -hmm. customers, Particularly if they are the frequent customers and who continuously Come keep and coming spend. and yes. nagging at yes. the service provider, mm -hmm. that can create a very resentful attitude from the service provider. Mm -hmm. So ultimately you find that because we now have an unhappy service provider, employee, due to the attitude of the customer, mm -hmm. You find this employee now starts actually providing poor service. Mm -hmm. So if you were to ask me, we should reach a point where we're not, we don't share away mm -hmm. from dealing with a negative-minded and negative attitude from a customer. A customer. Whether he's bringing millions, whether he's bringing one franc, we should be open with them and just tell let them what. Let me give you an example of a, an unruly customer. Mm. This was an experience on a flight. Mm -hmm. And you know the air hostess passes around and says, uh, chicken or beef? Mm -hmm. And this guy says, fish. <laughs> so the air hostess says, excuse me, sir, we only have chicken 
and beef. The guy says, why don't you have fish? Mm -hmm. I want fish. Mm -hmm. So all of us who were sitting around, this guy started you know, looking at him. Mm -hmm. And the fellow insisted he wanted fish. his fish. Mm -hmm. So, you know, these I would say they are trained, they are professionals. She didn't get angry. So she very politely, you know, says, gentlemen. In fact, she was so professional, she said, excuse me, sir, what is your name? <laughs> so the guy told her the his name. name. Mm. So she started now using the name. So that is another way of trying to it deal with... It softened him, mm. Yeah? Mm. Sure. Mm. That's right. Mm. But the guy just stubbornly refused to accept anything other than fish. fish. In fact, it is us passengers who now intervened on behalf of the... Our steps. That's right. Mm -hmm. Because of this very... Uh, no guy with a very negative attitude. Mm -hmm. So, uh, customers can at times be extremely mm. uh, arrogant. arrogant. Uh, uh, you know, Sandra, and as you answer that, yeah. because you initially say you are standing with the customer. Yes. I, I, people like you or people of like minded mm. uh, thoughts will mm. say, but he's right. He, he has paid his money. Mm. He needs to get what he mm. wants value for money. They will yeah. argue and say, He's right because the fact that he's able to tell the air hostess that I want fish, it's a source of, it's a feedback, it's a free feedback for the airline, you mm -hmm. know. So for the airline, it's an opportunity to realize that the next time um, they should, they should, um, they should, should have everybody whatever they want. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily, <laughs> but they should take into consideration the customer's comments, the customer's feedback. Yes. The, the point where I want to reach is that sometimes it's important that the service provider listens to the client. Mm -hmm. The client is right because whatever he tells us, whatever he tells the service provider helps him to improve his services. But when we block ourselves and when we think, oh, the customer is wrong, then we are not open for feedback. We are not open to improve our services. There, there is an, uh, an example where you, the last time we went to a place, the service was not very good. You know, we actually called to give the feedback, but straight away, no, 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 uh, you guys. And, and because the service provider was not available to listen to the feedback, I mean, I don't want to give the name, but mm. some months later, the, the restaurant was closed. You but know, at the, because but at they the end do not pay attention to what customers tell yes, them. Yes, but at the end of the day, yes, we want to give feedback. But what uh, Bonagera is saying here is, how do we do that without jeopardizing or even making the situation worse? And this is where probably Eve comes in. With, with your campaigns, the Naomi campaign, when you're promoting customer uh, you know, uh, care uh, and, and all that from your own desks and, and, and offices, where do you bring in this component or, or are you even bringing it? The component of you as a customer, this is what you should do in the instance that you are offered bad service or in an instance you're not happy or you want to give feedback. Where does that come in now? Right. Um, I think you may all be aware that uh, Rhonda's vision uh, is to become a service-led economy. Mm -hmm. With that, um, the strategy identified, of course, is to uh, develop Rwanda as a regional hub of, uh, for, for services and uh, tourism investments. So uh, in that context, our strategy, current strategy, I mean, to, to reach that level uh, is, is twofold. One uh, is uh, the, the behavioral change strategy we have at RDB currently um, has a, 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 a side of the, the, the consumer where we, we have programs, identified programs to address issues that uh, consumers uh, uh, are showing that uh, could improve service delivery, but also we have uh, another program also focused for service providers. Mm. But also into service providers, we categorize into segments because we, we, we do address segments uh, at a time. Uh, we, we segment the service providers into sectors and then we will we prioritize depending on the issues that are, are raised. So of course, we, we look at both sides. For example, I'll give you an example. When we we, we air um, uh, a serial drama. We have a very popular serial drama called uh, Nayombi on local radios. That one is targeting both, uh, I mean, the, the consumers, the local population, and as well the service providers. Depending on the matters we are discussing into the serial drama, it is fun, it's entertainment, but as well, there are lessons we put inside to make sure that uh, 
both sides are catered for. Mm. Yeah. And, and, and is this reflecting <laughs> down on the ground? Because at the end of the day, again, we do impact uh, assessment, uh, you know, and analysis mm. of, of whether people are changing because of these programs or it's a cultural issue and that cultural uh, belief that we are always right or things mm. have to always be like this mm. is changing as of that. Probably uh, Val, you can share with us. Do you, do you feel this on the ground yourself? Okay. I'll, I don't think I feel it. When I say on the ground, I mean with business owners. Yes. I find myself in debate a lot uh, when a business owner will complain and say, oh, I need to hire new people. These people are not doing what they're supposed to do. Can you believe they did this and they did that? And I'll always challenge the business owner and say, when was the last time you spent an hour transferring some form of knowledge to that yeah. person and trying to help them? Because you're assuming, because that person has a degree and they're coming into 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 to work at your as a researcher in your in your business they'll exact they will know exactly what to do they just have it programmed in them from university false does not happen you are the business owner so there's something you have more on on on, on what that uh on what your employee has there's something it can transfer so as much as you're saying yes you are you have these programs uh, programs and so forth but i'm yet to meet a business owner who can say something uh, that he has he has learned from the Naomi campaign. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's why I'm saying, yes, government is doing something that is great, but I think they also have limitations. Mm -hmm. There's only so much they can do. Mm -hmm. I think as the private sector, we kind of also need to take this problem on mm -hmm. and not just rely on one government institution to magically fix everything. Mm -hmm. And it's how much time are you spending with your staff? How are you recruiting your staff? Have you armed yourself with information to be able to figure out, okay, these are my frontline staff, I'm going to hire these type of people who are emotionally some kind of connection. They can look at uh, a situation and figure out how to deal with it. He gave the example of the air hostess. She asked for the name. That's probably something that she has learned. And then you came in with the feedback. You know, you can now see how there was an answer in all that, how, you know, the hostess could say, thank you so much for that. I want to take that feedback on and pass it on. So the customer also feels I have contributed. Yes. As much as, yes, there's some customers who are irate. But if you make them feel that that anger that they've taken so much time to harness and direct towards you has had some kind of impact in how you're going to move forward mm -hmm. is, is, is one way of doing it. But how can I expect all my staff to know that if I'm not actually passing that information on? So even when I talk about service providers, I want to draw a line mm -hmm. and I want to and I want to put, say, the owners of those businesses or the senior executive suite, the CEO, the CEO, and so forth, are the ones who I'm really talking about that the problem is theirs. Is in their court. cannot wait for mm -hmm. government. They can't keep carrying, holding our hands throughout. Mm -hmm. We also have to take on responsibilities and, and, and deal with our staff and spend time with them. Mm. Can I add something yes, on yes, that? Then, then because Jared I comes. think it's right that the CEOs, the MDs, and all that, they put in place systems to... To, to spend time with their teams and, and, and show them the right things to do. But it's also very important that together we all agree that customers or consumers have an important role to play. Mm -hmm. If consumers accept poor services, nothing will change, no matter how good service providers want to improve their services. I think culturally we can all admit that Rwandans don't complain that much and unfortunately it would it's having a negative impact on services if we do not complain if we do not tell the service provider that you are wrong here he would not know I'm sure the example Gerald gave uh, I don't know whether it was a Rwandan mm -hmm. who who made that uh, that it? comment and who insisted that he wanted fish I'm not very sure <laughs> A Rwandan cannot do that. You see? So that is it. Mm -hmm. The point is that we do not complain or mm -hmm. we feel bad. Cons customers feel bad complaining. You know, mm -hmm. the fact that you're able to, to question someone in front of everyone and say service is wrong, I would like this. People rather look at you as if you are the one the disturbing, you are the problem. Mm -hmm. yes. Why can't you just accept service as it is mm -hmm. and just go, you mm -hmm. know? So I think it's important that we let people, customers understand that it is their role, it is their responsibility to refuse poor services. If you go to a restaurant, okay, well, maybe it's because of my job, I would tweet every, everything, you know, wherever I go, whatever service, whether good or bad, I'll talk about them. But I think it has to become a general way of doing things. Mm -hmm. When we go to places and we have poor services, we should just refuse them, you know, we should tell them. You but if we keep quiet, could nothing this, will change. Could, should this be the attitude? Should this be the 
you know, the way to go now, uh, Gerald, because uh, she insists that we need to refuse. We need to complain. And, and you said earlier on that sometimes that can be looked at as attitude uh, or, 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 a, or a mindset problem. The why is, okay, we have offered a bad service or we have made a mistake here, but the approach they are using to tell us to correct it is not solving the issue. It's even making things worse. It's probably embarrassing us more. But should that be the, 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 the strategy to push for service providers to improve on their service delivery? You see, customer service is, is an experience. Mm. An experience uh, where there is interaction between the customer and the service provider. Then the service provider also is providing service under a certain environment. Mm. So, and that's where the business owners, Val is talking about, you mm. know, comes in. There is the issue of empowering the service provider so that they can provide that service. Mm -hmm. Now, Going back to that question of uh, the customer is always right. Uh, I understand what uh, the two ladies and the gentlemen here are, are talking about. You officially <laughs> agree you're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, but the, the point I'm trying to, to, to make is, if I have a restaurant, for example, and usually you come to my restaurant, mm -hmm. and every day you have got a complaint to make, and you are the only one who is complaining <laughs> out of everybody else. Everyone else. Mm. You know, the first time I would try and uh, eh? and be nice mm -hmm. and you polite. Know, and the second time, but the third time I said, "There's something wrong with this <laughs> customer," mm -hmm. and I'll probably start telling uh, my people there's a way of keeping you out. <laughs> so when it comes that one, no, no, no don't don't yeah, admit. Yeah, because you are continuously, mm -hmm. regularly complaining. So the problem could be. With you. But Sandra says yeah. this, this is, is this is a good yeah. way of this giving is, you feedback. This is free feedback. In <laughs> fact, you should be you should be paying the customers for giving you this feedback. When it is one customer out of a hundred who's always who's just always doing that. Mm. You know, that's what I'm saying. The first time I appreciate the feedback, mm. the second time I appreciate the feedback. But when now it comes third, fourth, fifth time. Maybe he's the one who says, maybe the others do not say it. So the fact that he is the one, like if you have someone yeah. like me, if yeah. I come mm -hmm. and it's bad, I will tell you. Mm -hmm. sure. Even if it's 10 times, I would keep telling you. Mm -hmm. If I come and it's good, I would always tell you. So does it mean that I'm coming with the intention of destroying your business? No, I'm coming because I want you to improve on the services. You know, but Who knows? If you, maybe, if your, you, maybe your intention is to destroy my business. Mm -hmm. What do I gain from it? You from know, the, and that is exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure, but that is exactly where the debate is. You mm -hmm. know, when we de when we complain, it's important that service providers do not take it personal. Mm -hmm. I, the customer has no reason whatsoever to destroy your business. The only reason he's complaining is that he wants you to improve on your services. He's paying for a service and he wants something that is worth it. Mm -hmm. If I go to a restaurant, if, if, um, let me say a four-star restaurant or wherever, you mm -hmm. know, you go to a restaurant where the bottle of water, for instance, is 1,005 or mm -hmm. 2,000 rather than uh, 200 or 500 by the roadside, what you're looking for is not the water because the water is the same whether you buy it for 500 mm. or for 2,000. Mm. What you're looking for in a restaurant that serves water for 2,000 is everything that is around it. Mm -hmm. yes. The service, the music, the environment, the cleanliness of the staff. So if I come and I make complaints because the staff that day is not smelling well, you should be able to understand that I'm not there to, to destroy your business. Mm -hmm. You need to give to the client something that is worth what he's paying. And that is why I think for Rwandan businesses, we need to understand that it's important we actually thank the customer for giving us the feedback, mm -hmm. for, for complaining and not taking it personally. So what, you know, what, 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 what Gerard should do is actually thank this person and maybe make him come more often than Definitely. not. Definitely. The, the, the point Recruit I'm him. trying to make is <laughs> Recruit him. When, when this guy is so regular yes. with his complaints, it has an impact on my employees. Mm -hmm. You see that? Mm -hmm. That is my worry. Mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the employees are human beings. Mm -hmm. And if they see this guy who is every day comes here, is complaining, that the attitude also of the employees is, that person there. Mm. Eh? <laughs> That's what they will keep saying. That's right. Hold that thought. We will definitely come back and move this conversation forward. Of course, look at uh, the, 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 the support mechanism that we can give also to service providers to ensure that they are also protected because we, as, as he says, we have customers who probably have ill intentions.
do they even exist? This is also another debate. Uh, and these are some Wherever of the Wherever there's competition, yes, they are going to be They'll always be, be, be there. So thank, definitely we're having this conversation right here on issues of customer service. And the question we're asking you is, who between the service providers and the customers have the responsibility of ensuring exemplary service is offered? Is it the customer? or is it the service provider? What are your personal experiences when it comes to issues of customer service? Share them out there. Would love to hear your experience, what you went through, how you handled it. If you're a provider or a customer, talk to us. We're coming back after this break. The hashtag to use is debate411. Stay with us. lock them out but if you're coming to our church and there are clear guidelines about dressing you come knowing that I have to put in a long skirt again uh, we say you have all these kind of people coming to church and who are not Christians who do not ascribe to your rules and regulations is this and I'm, my point is this from OAU to AU it is more than 50 years because OAU started in 1963. Oh, yes. This is 2015. And he said it took China why 20 years you, only. How, why yes. haven't you? Why are you Africans not paying your bills? Why, you, why are you not paying AU's bills? That's I my talked point. of Over a political way. Mm. I talked of a political way. Also, the, the, the dress code, especially uh, our sisters, when they put in mini skirts or the very tight one, it will be a problem. If this is not the... the, the it's not a matter of basta standing on the pulpit and teach, do this and this. They must understand it for themselves. It is not a case of negotiations. It is a case of bringing back um, the regime and, uh, and the president, Hunziza, to his senses. But what can you do if you are, you are producing the best product or the best thing that you can do as a professional and still you have this very few uh, bias. You cannot be faint-hearted, you cannot be soft and cope up with journalism. You have to be tough. Mm. We need to see how do we prepare the youth to be able to create jobs. How many can actually understand issues to do with finance? They can't even separate between a bank account and a wallet. Really? <laughs> Thank you so much. Welcome back. This is Debate 411 right here on Rwanda Television. My name as always is Eugene Adangwe. Off here we were also giving this conversation a different thought and of course continuing it on right here. Now, before we went for the break, we we're looking at the role of the service providers and of course the experiences and whether we have customers who could be, you know, customers for hire or guns for hire. To destroy your business and, and and how can we be able to ensure that we also don't fall in their trap when it comes to getting this free uh, you know uh, 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 feedback that that sandra mentions here but i want to understand from val what do you really think is the role of customers because you said the customer is always right where do they or what is their position when it comes to pushing for good service delivery in terms of the customer care okay I, i'm so I'm going to reinforce what Sandra said, uh, but I'm still going to go back to the business mm -hmm. owner. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, the customer gives you an opportunity to get feedback. Not all customers have the ability to do that. Let's accept that, mm -hmm. right? Some are maybe too emotionally charged at that time, and maybe you may not even get constructive feedback. The, some of the situations that Gerard is talking about, I think, are very rare, mm -hmm. right? I think the problem is a bit more general, a little bit more widespread. That's why I should remove uh, the word locally. always. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now let's so let's 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 debate on that mm -hmm. in terms of uh, the word always. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it, it the customer is a source of information that will help me achieve whatever it is that I want to achieve as a business, which is a commercial objective, mm -hmm. right? So 
I, I'm going to go back to those bad moments. For me, those bad moments, when they're, those moments of truth that I'm talking about, are the ones that I think directly impact our bottom line. Mm. And that's why I'm saying, Eve, I, I appreciate the job that you're doing. But if private sector were to take this on a little bit more seriously and say, well, for us, we're in it for the money, right? We're trying to make a business. What do we need to do to ensure that if, uh, whether the customer is right or whether the customer is not right, how are we going to take that opportunity to impact mm. our mm. bottom line? Mm. 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 And first, again, back to the business owner. How are you employing your frontline staff? Who are they? Who's your first line of defense? Are the people who get hurt? Is someone who's going to go cry the minute a customer barks at them? Maybe you're wrong. Mm. As you say, you know, you mentioned these people could have an impact on my staff. The staff need to be different. That frontline mm. staff needs to be able to handle that kind of situation because you need it handled. Because at the end of the day, if it's not handled, your business suffers. She gave an example. She gave feedback. Mm -hmm. the, they were not very happy about it. But really, later on, the restaurant closed. Mm -hmm. So we have to look at it as what is the point of this debate? The point is we need to survive as an industry. We need to continue growing in whatever business that we need to do. Mm -hmm. And to do that, we need customers. To, to, to talk to us. And, exactly. and this is why I bring in Eve, because there, it's one thing to complain, because uh, she mentioned she has the authority or, or, or the ability to be on, on platforms like Twitter. We have the battalion that is on Twitter that is always ready to make noise on, 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 on issues that are going wrong, especially on customer service. They will uh, put it out there. But where this information lands, is it taken forward? Is there action that takes place? This is where now RDB comes in. Because most people have been complaining of issues that have continued recurring on and on and on. And they sort of feel that this nothing is being, nothing done. Is being yeah. done. Right. Um, thank you. I think uh, if I may touch on quickly what the, the discussion before, then I can go to that question. Mm -hmm. I think there are, there are valid points that have, that have been raised. I think they are all, uh, all, all valid. Uh, there is a point uh, of uh, Valentin raised about uh, the ownership by the leaders of uh, the, I mean the, the companies, organizations. Um, from from our side, the way we see it, uh, we see that uh, there have been there has been a, very, a top from uh, His Excellency the President. Mm -hmm. There has been an emphasis on quality service in this country, mm -hmm. and that has been um, cascaded down. But we feel that uh, there has been not enough ownership by the uh, uh, managers, CEOs of, uh, of, uh, of companies to make sure that uh, that is made a culture into their institutions. And in such incidents where there is no ownership and where there is no taking up this responsibility, what are you able to do? Right. Um, that's what, um, our, our, our strategy is, uh, is fourfold. Uh, mainly we, we, we do standards, putting in place standards. Uh, of course, in collaboration with the regulators of uh, different sectors. Again, also we have uh, the second one is to enforce those standards. But again, we, we, don't, we, we know that uh, uh, those people need capacity building. So we do <coughs> capacity building to make sure that uh, the private sector, but also the, the, the government uh, um, um, employees are trained. They have capacity to, to be able to deliver. <coughs> because you cannot request uh, something from someone who doesn't have it. Because uh, sometimes... Uh, People don't wake up with an attitude to go and give bad service. Mm. But they don't know how to handle, as like Valentin was saying, how to handle a difficult customer. When it comes to a complaint, they don't know how to handle. That's why there is capacity building. And again, there is a, 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 another program of raising awareness, sensitization globally, to make sure that people are complaining, but also that people know that uh, there is avenues. The avenues are, are, are mainly to, uh, first, when, when there is such a, a complaint, we, we, we advise uh, the, the, the customer first to complain where he's getting the service mm. immediately. Before he calls RDB or any, any other regulator, complain from the person you're getting the service from. Secondly, you complain to the supervisor of that person at the institutional level. And then if that is not addressed, you can go to the regulator now. So those who go straight to Twitter are violating this process? They are not really violating, <laughs> it's complementing the, the, the existing uh, method because uh, the institutions on Twitter, but also uh, we think it is also good to raise uh, some of these complaints to make sure that uh, uh, those people who are responsible, they address. Because mm. if you have seen uh, the tweets that we have been getting, uh, seeing uh, uh, here about the complaints mainly, um, there are some of them, of course, which are, uh, for example, we have seen on uh, the water and the issues that uh, are not uh, well, they, are, they always respond, 
the handles, you will see the handles of this institution, they respond. And uh, some of them are addressed mm -hmm. here and there, uh, but uh, some others, they are not addressed due to the, the, the nature of the complaint. And uh, mm. but yes. Because what Valentine was saying, that sometimes the contact staff doesn't have the tools to handle the, those complaints. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure someone who is in an institution, in a district, for instance, where he has a complaint, the person he's talking to actually doesn't have a clue. So the guy, mm -hmm. the only option he has is probably to tweet mm -hmm. or to look for, you know, tag us. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that is why it's also important, coming back to what Valentin is saying, that the contact staff should be equipped with tools, with ways of handling the, 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 the feedback. The, or the, the feedback. Yeah. Gerald, do you feel <laughs> customers or the issue of customer service will not be solved by the eaves, <coughs> but by just the, the, the service providers and the customers themselves. Why am I asking this? Because he mentions that there are certain areas where they can come in, but there are areas where they can't come in because you have to follow one, two, three, four, five ways. And, 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 and there are those who are probably on this side and they're feeling like what they are doing, maybe it's not even enough, or we're not even feeling it. He says people complained about water, but the handles of those institutions have been responding. But we have others who say, but look, they're not even responding to us. And, and they're not seeing uh, Eve's institution in there. Will they save us or we are all on our own and this is something we will just do ourselves? <laughs> you see, Eugene, the, there is a, like, if you look in the, the private sector, mm -hmm. one of the biggest challenges is the failure of the business owners to appreciate the role of quality service on their business. Mm -hmm. In the service industry now, customer service is the biggest factor in, you know, in terms of the bottom line. Mm -hmm. Talk of all these you know, telecom companies, the banks, the insurance companies, they are all trying to fight for customers. Mm -hmm. And it is the the way you handle your customers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that will determine the number of customers you, you will get. You get. Mm. So customer service, in fact, I, I always tell people there are two most important things now in business, is technology and customer service. Mm -hmm. That's what determines the bottom line. Now, if you look at it, even technology, technology is used to make service even easier for the customers. Mm -hmm. So technology is a subset really of customer service. Mm -hmm. Now, do businesses understand that how you look after your customer is what determines your profitability? Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, not very many people mm -hmm. understand that. Mm -hmm. Because if they did, then they would do everything what Val was saying, mm -hmm. ensuring, for example, that's the word we use in, uh, in training is empowering your staff. Mm -hmm. Give them all the skills, give them all the knowledge, and see if you can even play a role in developing their attitude mm. so that they have a positive attitude mm. in the providing the service. If the business owners understand the role of customer service, they will try and do that. The other thing is, it is the infrastructure in the organization also that plays a big role in the quality of service that we provide. Mm. Now, that is in the private sector. Yes, the, 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 the back ends at the owner mm -hmm. of the business. Mm -hmm. He is the person who is supposed to drive service in his business mm -hmm. by ensuring that all the employees are, eh, mm -hmm. have whatever is necessary to provide exceptional service. Mm -hmm. Now, we're talking about water, electricity, and mm -hmm. so on. Of course, that's something we're all facing today. Mm -hmm. eh? So you know, the other day, mm -hmm. even prices mm -hmm. went up. Mm -hmm. Now, <coughs> I think with the public sector, uh, some of the challenges are too huge. Uh, if we talk about water, you might find that the problems started right some years back. Mm. In order to change some of these things, like to make sure that we all have energy, that takes a lot of resources. Mm. Sometimes people tend to think that the government has unlimited resources, mm. which is not the, the, the case. Mm -hmm. eh? So there are times when we just have to be... Eh, we hang on, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, to be patient because some of these things take time. Mm. Now, you know, sometimes we try and, and compare ourselves with the developed countries. Mm. If you look at uh, these developed countries, who, who, you know, when you look at their customer service index, 
they're way, way up there. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are here, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. It took them years to get there. So what you're saying, the yeah. customers as well need to be understanding. I, absolutely. But this, this attitude of kuihangana, yes. for some people they feel this is an excuse. Accepting this principle of kuihangana, if you're told that and you take it in, it's, 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 it's a shortcut to not giving good customer service. I totally dislike that, that, <laughs> 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 that expression and I've been fighting it because I, I personally think that asking people to be patient, to mm. be understanding, to be all, it helps us not to move forward. Mm. You know, if a customer pays for a service, he should be able to, to get that service. I totally agree with you when mm. it comes to the private sector. Mm. Yes, but, but even the public, the public sector. you know, you go to a district, um, yes. we've been trying, okay, now I don't want to give names here, but for instance, a district, someone from the district came to the office, did an inspection. This guy is supposed to give a report a week after. It's been two months. Mm -hmm. Whenever you go to the district, they tell the guy is on holidays, there's no one else there. And this is two months. And this is a government. Two months, you're very lucky. Mm -hmm. Ah, you see? <laughs> and this is a district uh, at a district level. And these are people who are there because they are paid with our, with our taxes. Mm -hmm. And it's important that we refuse, of course, we, because we use the service mag, we have different platforms to talk about all this. But look at the, the ordinary person who has no access to social media, he would go two months for him, it's even normal. Mm -hmm. He would say, oh, probably in the next six months, I'll get that paper. Mm -hmm. And that is why the expression of queen hunger, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it, we should Sh be Should banned. we take it, Valentine, in your own opinion, do you feel this, this, this whole expression of, you know, just relax, uh, we are sorry, we, we take your time, it's, it's okay, we will sort it out. I, is it an excuse to giving good customer service or you feel customers should be able to understand that we are facing this difficulty, they just should sit back and relax? I would actually rephrase the whole thing mm -hmm. and go back to how we tackle other things in this country. There's a, there's a very strong sense of patriotism in Rwanda mm -hmm. that seeps onto anyone who comes here, wherever you're from. Mm -hmm. And there's a sense of together we can achieve mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. So he said, he, 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 he mentioned uh, something, he told people first complain to the service provider, mm -hmm. then ask for the supervisor and so forth. Mm -hmm. I don't think people know that. You need to maybe perhaps put more effort mm. um, in actually putting that across. Because her example as a district, yes, that person should be able to um, find a way to get this, uh, you know, escalate the issue. So they have a chance themselves to be able to fix it. You cannot assume that all the district offices will have the same service level. But mm. we as customers need to try and say together, perhaps, if we... We try and keep pushing and demanding, but in a polite way, which is now the balance, mm. right? Mm. So what we're saying is here is we're not going to go, ha, 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 I'm so mm. mad and, uh, mm. and insult people. They have given us an idea, so let's do it together, mm. right? But that way we'll start to point out, because the government can start to see, aha, I keep getting bad ratings for this particular district. There's a problem there. Mm. Let's go look. Who's our frontline staff there? Do they need extra training? So let the government focus on that. And, and just what Jared said, can we really expect them to fix everything? I don't think so. Mm. What if his job was to merely focus on the public institutions and we as a private sector said, okay, you deal with that, let's deal with our part, mm. the, 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 the private right. sector. Mm. And I'm actually challenging PSF here and I'm trying to say, we're all complaining. When it comes to looking for access for finance for the private sector, that if you ask, call for meeting for that, it will be full, mm. it will overflow, mm. right? Mm. But call for meeting and say, now we need to think about how we're going to train your receptionists and mm. so forth. Hey, four people turn up or they'll send their... Uh, the, 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 the so people are not receptive to this. Yeah, so mm. we need to deal with this as a big problem. Mm. And because it's a big problem, we need to share the mm. problem. Mm. That is, I think, how it needs Yes, to Eve, because he mentioned it, 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 it's rare, the thing of kuihangana in, 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 in private sector, but it could be more when it comes to public uh, sector. How do we <coughs> ensure that public institutions go beyond what the labor laws say, for example? Because you'll find someone coming, urgently needing a service. It's 12, they'll tell you, to Jemuri pose, and they yeah. are just closing. And yeah. they, they were there. Uh, they hadn't left yet yeah. when you walked in, but they will shut the door and say, to Jemuri pose, come back some nane. You, you sit there, wait for them. You've traveled all the way. Yeah. You know, how do we ensure that on top of following these labor laws, mm -hmm. we ensure that public institutions go beyond what they are supposed to do to ensure that they are offering customer service properly. Right. Uh, I think there, there are um, 
a lot of things that has been done to make sure that uh, uh, our district offices, local government improve on service delivery. Um, when we compare, for, uh, I mean, the years uh, uh, before to now, we see uh, there, is, there is a change. It's not significant, but I mean, there is a change. We see uh, the delays, uh, I mean, they are reducing, the time frame is reducing, but always uh, uh, the customers are always, always want to, to have uh, better experiences. So mm -hmm. it is a challenge. Um, the thing that we've done at the local government uh, level, for example, putting in place uh, service charters, client charters, uh, citizen charters, to make sure that uh, each service, which is uh, government regulated at the local government, we have uh, the service, the person who is to provide the service, the time frame it takes, and how to complain. Mm. And those service charters are all over the country. They are on the, all the districts, at the district level, at sector level. They are all there, and, and, the, and the, now they're being disseminated, they are there. Has, has anybody been fired as a result of this complaint <laughs> today? Uh, How I, many? I, I think uh, firing is the last option. So um, you're still waiting for the last no, option? I'm not in come. charge of, uh, of, of, of the firing, yes, yes. and that is uh, the, the best part of it. Now, uh, there are also other avenues. For example, you'll see when you go to the local government, you'll see at their doors, mm -hmm. you'll see uh, uh, um, I mean, you'll see a picture of the person offering the service, his number, and also the person to complain to. Mm -hmm. That is, has been done purposely to make sure that if that person offers bad service, there is a way. But also at the ministry level, they will put hotlines in place, free of charge, to make sure that if you're not at the district level, there are hotlines. But also at the ministry level, if you're not offered a uh, good service at, at uh, a sector level, mm -hmm. you can complain to the supervisor. It is on the door the mm -hmm. number of the person you can complain to, but also if you're not satisfied, you can take it forward to the district. Mm -hmm. They have hotlines free of charge, but also if you're not, uh, I mean, you don't, you're not satisfied as well, you can still complain to the ministry, mm -hmm. which is, uh, and the Rwanda Governance Board, mm -hmm. which are all avenues to, to raise these, these uh, issues. Maybe we, as uh, Valentin said, we, see, we still need to, to emphasize on and that. And, uh, I've seen people more. even complain directly to the president himself. <laughs> uh, and, and it has worked before. Now, Gerald, in to, closing, as yeah. we go now, yeah. you know, way forward as we go. Customer service yes. mm -hmm. is, so, is very important for this country. Mm -hmm. Extremely important. <laughs> That's why the president, every time he gets an opportunity, he talks about quality customer service. Mm -hmm. And I think we should not leave it unregulated. Yes. I think there should be in place some regulatory mechanism to enforce standards. Mm -hmm. Right now, as Eve says, you know, uh, yeah, well, there are some things we do here and there. You even asked, has anyone been mm -hmm. there? Mm -hmm. It's because just like ev other sectors, they are regulated. Mm -hmm. The financial sector is regulated. The health sector is regulated. The education sector is regulated. I think there should also be a mechanism of putting in place regulations to uh, measure the quality of service being given in this country. And enforcement. And, in, and enforce it. Mm -hmm. And until that is done, people will share, going, you know, to go round and round, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know just in rounds, uh, in circles rather. Mm -hmm. Now, Rwandese, we are very good at obeying not just laws, but even rules. Mm -hmm. The government can just put in place rules. Mm -hmm. Rwandese, we are very good at following. Following. Mm -hmm. And all, that's all they have to do. Mm -hmm. You know, in my trainings, there is one participant who asked Mr. Mpisi, customer service is indeed very important, as you are saying. But how come that, look, I'm in my 40s. I'm now being trained in customer service. Mm -hmm. When I say part of uh, the mechanism, the regulation that the government should put in place is they should start teaching customer service in secondary schools. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm told now they are going to start uh, teaching uh, financial literacy mm -hmm. in schools. Mm -hmm. Customer service could be part a component, component, or component mm -hmm. of that. So that by the time someone is leaving school and going to employment, you have the basic understanding of what providing exceptional services all Means. about. Yes, yes. Thank you. And, and you would mentioned that Rwandese rarely complain. Are you trying to say we need to see them now start? Where is the manager of this place? Absolutely. This is what you want? Yes. Now. Awesome. Uh, Val, as we go, parting um, words. I just want to second what you have said. Um, it's interesting you brought up the regulatory. And 
uh, when it comes to government, um, I have lived in different markets, mm -hmm. and I must commend the government here. Mm -hmm. For me, I think they're doing good. Mm -hmm. There we can be patient. Mm -hmm. I can see it rolling out. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anyone has been to Ministry of Immigration, but I don't think I've ever seen a more well-oiled machine mm -hmm. than that. Mm -hmm. um, then there is, so there's, that's why I'm like, okay, focus there. I'm just challenging us in the private sector mm -hmm. to fix our problem, mm -hmm. ourselves. You used a very key word there, basic understanding. We ourselves, just as a, a small cube, mm -hmm. we train undergraduates, pick a few um, on a course called basics. Mm -hmm. And basics is getting into the corporate world. So there's only so much you can learn in school. But when you get in the corporate world, how do you matter? B is for bottom line. How mm -hmm. do you matter to the bottom line? I don't have to take you through the rest, but we're doing our own little thing. Mm -hmm. We can't afford to do many because we're doing it on, on a free basis. So you're challenging but other private sector I'm institutions saying, to do the same? I will even share that course with you and I'll email it to you and I just want you to try and mm -hmm. let's pull together and let's see how can we help these kids coming out of school, mm -hmm. come in with an attitude mm -hmm. of... I have to matter, yep. and for me, mattering is I have to contribute to my bottom line, to contribute to the bottom line of this mm -hmm. business, mm -hmm. customer. And with these kids, you mean yeah. oh, those, kids, will be, mean <laughs> those will be customers and those will be service providers? Yeah. I guess for me, yeah, it's those going into employment yes. that I'm focused on because so, I'm, my mind is still on service providers. Awesome. Very uh, quickly. Uh, I think that it's important uh, that customers understand that they have an important role to play. Mm -hmm. You know, for instance, with the service mag, we organize uh, a serial, I mean, uh, quite a number of activities where we ask customers to come play, you mm -hmm. know, to voice out, to give out names. We would get a lot of messages offline because people do not want to write it, you know, or just... They want to be anonymous yeah, as they, well. Yeah, yes. because they are afraid and whatever. So I think... If we want to move forward, we all need to understand that if we don't complain, nothing would change. It's our responsibility. It's, 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 it's part of us. And if we don't do anything, if we keep quiet, because that is how it is, because it is in Africa, because that is how things should, should be done in Africa, nothing will go. We need to look for the best in everything we need, we're need. doing, and we need to complete. All right. It's, it's important. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time, and thank you for the insights. And I'm sure if you would be going to his restaurant and complaining <laughs> all the time, rest assured you're being kicked out. And if you're the only one complaining. Thank you so much for your time. Awesome. And of course, uh, thank you also for sharing your thoughts. Keep tweeting. Mention some of those institutions if you like, if you believe that will help them, you know, feel under pressure to improve on the way they handle their customers. Of course, would love to hear from you and keep tweeting at Debate411. Use the hashtag Debate411 and we'll see you again on Wednesday. Thank you for being with us. My name as always is Eugene Anangwe. We'll see you again next time. In this debate, I am really a social observer. Mm -hmm. I want to know what is happening and what people want. Our issue today is whether raising this drinking age is going to solve this problem. Maybe if you are a parent, you also have kids at home. Are you going to just give them alcohol because they are 18? I think the, fir the first thing that they should do is just that get some of these guys who do showbiz and take them to some like kind of a rehabilitation center. How do we convince them and say that we shut it down because you exceeded the limit? Buy it for prevention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for example, you have a show somewhere, mm -hmm. then you tell your DJ, please, mm -hmm. don't, don't exceed, exceed mm -hmm. 55. If we assume that uh, Frank is speaking on behalf of the Green Party, and I'm not sure that that is the case, he will tell us. No, I'm not sure I, about I, that. I, Can I you first clarify that? Well, you haven't told me. You need a boyfriend for math. You go to your math teacher. You go to your parents, you, you have brothers. What you don't understand, go to your brother or a sister. You need, he exchanges notes with you. For what? This is an EA production.